The church today is being threatened from within by a spiritual virus with a strange name, the New Age Movement. What is it? What are its characteristics? What are its dangers? Stay tuned for an interview with an expert on the subject. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy and our special guest again this week, Warren Smith. Glad to have you, Warren. Good to be here. Also glad to have my colleague Nathan Jones with me. Nathan, uh, we we had quite a program last night, uh, last uh, week with uh, uh, Warren. What a testimony! I was spellbound. I I was riveted. I couldn't even <laughs> I hardly say anything. Well, you know, the Lord the Lord does work in mysterious ways, but it's important for people to know that did see that show that there are just countless numbers of people that were involved in the things that I was involved in. And it's my what I did was not unique. It's just fairly unique that I got out of it. Many people are lost in the New Age, and that's one reason I wrote The Light That Was Dark, to try to help have you know materials that people can right. look at and understand. Well, folks, uh, if you were not tuned in last week and saw this uh, program that we had with him uh, that was just so incredible uh, with his personal testimony about how God led him out of the New Age movement and how deep he got into it, uh, then you can watch it on our website at lamblion.com. That's lamblion, no and in the middle, lamblion.com. And uh, you can see the entire program there. We have nearly all of our uh, television programs from recent years posted there. So just go take a look at it because it's something you don't want to miss. And, and uh, if you like to read, then you can get this book, which is entitled The Light That Was Dark. And the subtitle is From the New Age to Amazing Grace. In fact, we'll tell you how you can get a copy of that book at the end of this program. But that contains his fascinating, just riveting testimony about his spiritual pilgrimage into the New Age and out of it. Now, Warren, I'd like to pick up where we left off last week. And I'd like for you to just tell us what are some of the basic characteristics of the New Age movement? You know, in 2 Corinthians 11, the Apostle Paul talked about the simplicity in Christ. There's a simplicity in the deception. So it's really important that people don't get confused. There are so many different aspects of the deception of the New Age, what is now being called the new spirituality, or even new world view. I mean, new world religion was the phrase for a while, but a new world view is easier for people. Maybe Christians can even be guided into a new worldview that will help the world come to peace. Mm -hmm. You know, in Daniel, uh, we were told that in Daniel 8 that the Antichrist, you know, is going to have a wonderful deception. He will destroy wonderfully. And by peace he shall destroy many. All these teachings are heading up to a process where the world is going to be told to get online and atonement will be a word that will be used. But what those of us that were in the New Age understand is that it's at one mint, mm -hmm. not atonement so much as at one mint. We are all one because God is in everyone and everything. And when we recognize our oneness, we can all come together and help achieve world peace. Some Christian leaders are even buying into this by having materials that bring this oneness and this God in everything teaching into the church. Okay, I want to get into that in just a mm -hmm. moment, how it's impacted the church, but I, I want to dwell a little bit longer here on the fundamental characteristics of the movement. So you're saying that you boil it all down, the fundamental characteristic is God is in everything in us. And so that's what Shirley MacLaine, I guess, was doing when she stood on the seashore and yelled, I am God, I am God, I am God. She's she was the one that was put forward back in 1987 on television. She became the butt of like David Letterman's jokes. Yes. She outed that and it got the conversation. That's a big word these days, conversation. Let's have a conversation, mm -hmm. which really, let's, let's see what we can do to compromise. Let's get it all on the table and see if we can come up with an idea that we'll, we can all move forward. But Shirley MacLaine started it off. That was in 1987. That was the same year that Marilyn Ferguson, the author of The Aquarian Conspiracy, was on the Oprah Winfrey Show on a show entitled The New Age Movement. Back in 1980, Marilyn Ferguson wrote the book Aquarian Conspiracy. And in that book, she said, basically, we have a great idea, a great heretical idea, God within, God in everything. 
She said, we're not going to be able to pull this off right away, but over time, if it's widely publicized, we will be able to have our way. I mean, it was outrageous. And actually, a lot of New Age leaders today are very upset that she used the word conspiracy in her, the title of her book because it actually plays into the reality. She was being cute, but it actually, there is a conspiracy, and the conspiracy is to get this great heretical idea that God indwells his creation. God is in everyone and everything. Last week, I had mentioned a book called The Shack that was a very popular book, mm-hmm. not only in the world. It was actually at, at the top of the New Age bestseller list, but it was also... Every Christian bookstore. Yeah. Every church was preaching <laughs> yeah. from it. And, and, you know, people go, well, but Jesus is in there. Well, what a lot of people don't understand is that, I think it was on page 112, that Jesus of the shack said, God, who is the ground of all being, dwells in and around and through all things. And then if you look carefully at that book, when the word creation is brought up, it's a capital C. Those of us from the New Age know that when you see creation with a capital C, it means that God indwells his creation. Um, And that's very different from what the Bible teaches. God is not indwelling his creation, right? Psalm 39, 5. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Right. Or in John 2, 24, 25, Jesus said, you know, referring to Jesus says that he did not commit himself to men because he knew what was in men. Now, why, why would that be said if God is in man? Why wouldn't he be emphasizing that? He was actually saying, watch out. You know, men amongst themselves can be very dangerous in the teachings. that. So God is not within each person. Now, you mentioned Oprah, and she has just been uh, sort of a high priestess of this whole thing with one uh, New Age uh, writer and speaker after another on her program. Would you just quickly mention some New Age names from the secular world that people would recognize, that might recognize, that they could be aware of? Sure. Uh, She had M. Scott Peck on her program uh, back in the early 90s. And a lot of people don't realize that M. Scott Peck, although describing himself as a Christian, was really more of kind of like an emerging contemplative New Age Christian because in his book he said God is within everybody and he actually laid out a plan. He said we're in crisis and that's what the Aquarian conspiracy said. We're in crisis and we need to have a new way of looking at things. We need a new world view. And what he basically said was that our salvation lies in community. He didn't say in Jesus Christ but in community. And he said that under the duress of these times, we need to change some of our rules. Yes, and that includes the church. Mm -hmm. So he was introducing this idea. And I wrote an article years ago about M. Scott Peck and the community of the Cosmic Christ. And starting off the article, there was a big quote by Peck saying that the mystical prophet who is bringing forward this idea of sort of a quantum leap into a new level of understanding was Catholic Jesuit priest Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, mm-hmm. C-H-A-R-D-I-N. He was the father of the New Age movement. The title, The Aquarian Conspiracy, was taken from Chardin. Chardin said, this soul must be a conspiracy of individuals. And Chardin's teachings are simply this, that God is in every atom. And that's exactly, that's exactly. Sounds like Star Wars, pantheism, right? May the force be with you. The force, yeah. you know, this force is God that penetrates his creation. You know, it comes in, in various ways, but you just hit well, one Well, quickly, of, just yeah. mention a few names without okay. what, 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 they're, what okay. they teach. Just Deep, a Deepak few. Chopra, uh, Betty Eady. Uh, How about Oz? You mentioned Shirley MacLaine. Uh, Mehmet Oz was, was Oz. for five years, he was featured on Oprah Winfrey. Now he has his own program. Every day. And Dr. Oz... Um, is probably one of the more dangerous, and I say that carefully, uh, occultists out there. He has endorsed uh, a book by a psychic by the name of Ainsley McLeod. The book is called The Instruction, and Oz has a front cover endorsement, and in that book, the psychic refers to spirit guides 175 times. 40 before you get to chapter 1, he talks about past lives. He encourages the reader to get into meditation, to contact their spirit guides. Oz is on the cover. Oz has uh, also brought forward transcendental meditation, which Oz says he does. Reiki, which is a very dangerous uh, 
sort of body treatment that in, includes spirit guides, and the Reiki practitioners make it very clear that spirit guides are involved in that process. But, uh, but these people are so nice. Yeah. Well, they're so they're smooth. Loving. You know, I, actually, when I was a social worker in the New Age, some people thought I was kind of nice. But, you know, <laughs> niceness doesn't have much to do with it. You know, we've got, some, we've got some pastors out there that seem pretty nice, and they're bringing a lot in of fact, this the stuff the Antichrist in. is going to be very nice. Isn't probably, yeah. Probably, yeah, very <laughs> much so. Antichrist. Does, the, you always hear in the New Age movement, Lord Maitreya. Could you explain a little to me, this, is that supposed to be the Antichrist or the, the, the Messiah of the New Age movement? I'm really impressed. <laughs> I was at a conference recently, and there must have been 300 people. I said, has anybody ever heard of Maitreya? <laughs> One person raised their hand. Now, here's a young guy that is asking. Maitreya, I actually, I wrote a book called False Christ Coming, and Maitreya was one of the first four chapters. Every teaching, okay, Maitreya, Benjamin Krem was like Maitreya's John the Baptist. Yep. And in 1982, there was a full-page ad in newspapers all around the world saying, the Christ is here, and he is waiting to be called forth. Benjamin Krem was on Coast to Coast Radio probably four or five times over the last decade saying the very same thing. He's saying Maitreya is still waiting to be called forth. A lot of people have just dismissed it as a bad joke. What I show in my book is that what Maitreya teaches is absolutely consistent with A Course in Miracles, with New Age leader Barbara Marks Hubbard, with Neil Donald Walsh's conversations with God, and with everything that Oprah Winfrey, Deepak Chopra, Dr. Oz are teaching. It's all the same bottom line. And a lot of it's being brought in, is, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up with Oz, through health, through holistic health. Uh, one well-known pastor actually said that, you know, if you try to change your diet, you have to be careful because you could end up changing your worldview. Mm -hmm. And that could very well happen. Um, with Dr. Oz, one well-known Christian pastor has brought him into the church uh, to teach the church how to be healthy. Okay, now I want us to pause here for just a moment, and when we come back, we want to focus on how is all this impacting the church. Well, welcome back to our interview with Warren Smith, an expert on the New Age movement, and uh, boy, what a what a series of revelations you've given us. So take it from there, Nathan. Well, I'd like to know, you have such a background, you, you know how to recognize the New Age movement. How does it influence the churches? Well, uh, or, or it, I say penetrated the churches. You know, you can, you can go all the way back to someone like uh, Norman Vincent Peale and the power of positive thinking. Uh, I think it's on page 40 in his book, The Power of Positive Thinking. He says, God is in you. Robert Schuller in a 2003 television program said, yes, God is alive and He is in every single person. So That's classic New Age. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the you know, really well-known preachers and pastors are using some of these new Bible versions. And there's one from the New Century Version that says, God rules everything, is everywhere, and is in everything. And people can say, oh, but, you know, God is. He's in, in his, his universe. and Omnipresent. You know, they're, like when Schuller said, God is alive and he is in every single person. That's very specific. And, you know, translations like the message just water down God's word. And I was surprised to see in the message right away, the first time I read it, oneness is talked about in Ephesians. And, and that, talked, that's a code word, really, for it. It really is. Yeah, oneness. Like he says, oneness pervades. He, this was his translation in, in Ephesians 4, somewhere in that area. He said, uh, oneness pervades everything you are and think and do. That feeds right into the whole New Age concept. And what, what I'd like to just say is that, yeah, I see these things maybe a lot more because I was involved in the New Age. But anybody that's reading their Bible, you know, I mean... Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, my words will not pass away. The Bible described everything I was involved in. It's describing everything that's coming into the church. And that people try to explain away, like, well, say, hey, well, the shack is a good book to give to unbelievers. No, it's not, because of the New Age teachings that are in there, like God dwells in and around and through all things. And the author is a stated universalist, right? He calls himself a Christian. Yeah, well, they all. Call I mean, Oprah. Them Oprah, Oprah, Christian, Oprah calls they? herself a Christian too, yeah. and so, so you've got to look at okay, what what kind of Christianity are they talking about? Yeah. And the and the scripture that comes to my mind is a little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. 
You cannot have these false teachings inserted into these books surrounded by truth. They'll say, like in the emerging church, they'll say all truth is God's truth. And then they'll take something out of the Course in Miracles and use that as a, you know, and it might be something that's true. Well, one of the things about the emergent church movement that uh, really concerns me, and I would say is a fundamental characteristic of it, is that they deny that there really is absolute truth. It's a which in itself is an absolute statement. Exactly. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so if, if you're going to discuss the issue of homosexuality, it's not what the Bible has to say. It's what do you think? What do you think? What do I think? What do you and, yeah. and And you just sort of exchange all this, but no one comes down and says, here's what the Word of God says. Yeah. yeah because Apologies. there's not a belief in absolute yeah. truth. Eric Barja had some great statements. Maybe you can confirm this for me. He says that the, the New Age or the emergent church follows this, experience over reason spirituality over doctrinal absolutes, images over words, feelings over truth, earthly justice over salvation, and social action over eternity. Is that the definition of a New Age church? He's done a good job of of covering a lot of that. I think one of the most significant things that he mentioned there is something that people need to be aware of is spiritual experience is trumping the Word of God in the church, and okay. particularly in the emerging church. But throughout the churches, people are having spiritual experiences that will bring in, hopefully from the devil's standpoint, new revelation, which will end up providing a new worldview. And the way they're doing that mainly is through contemplative prayer. Okay. It's, a, it's a code, really, for the meditation. What is contemplative prayer? We hear a lot about that. Now, what is it? Okay, well, the way that it's presented is you recite Scripture, and then you close your eyes or you, 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 you be still and, and, and listen to see if God will speak to you. You try to empty your mind. You're, yeah, you're ba- it's basically almost like a technique. Well, no, they would say you don't empty your mind, you recite Scripture, but pretty close. And, but you, you wait to hear what God would tell you. The dangerous thing is, and Richard Foster, for one, uh, talks about this. He says that you can always tell the voice of Satan because it's foreboding and dark and, and that the Lord, and, and that just is very bad advice. And, and yeah. what I n- never have heard with any of these people that are talking about contemplative prayer is to test the spirits. First John 4, 1. Believers need to remember that these admonitions were directed to believers just because we're following the Lord, we can still be misled. And there are a lot of voices out there. And a lot of these voices are now coming in. Books like The Shack, people don't realize that the author of The Shack told a small group that met privately in a house church that he had real conversations with God and that the teachings in his book were from God. He just put them in a novel form. Like Joseph Smith or Muhammad. All hearing from God, right? So people are being directed to to listen to God's voice. And I've even seen some recent conferences where you have well-known Bible teachers and and church leaders that are inducting a whole audience and saying, okay, let's, let's see what Jesus would tell us right now with no warnings. Remember, in 2 Corinthians 11, Paul chided the Corinthians, you just might follow, if another Jesus, another gospel... Another spirit comes through here, you might just go for it. There's another Jesus out there, and I just need to tell people, make sure it's Jesus Christ of Nazareth that's consistent with the Bible, because there are a lot of Jesuses out there, and Paul was warning about that. Well, is this simply a reflection of the postmodern age that we're supposed to be in right now, where people uh, are turned off by the idea of reading the Word of God and finding out what God would say to them, as opposed to having a touchy-feely experience? It's, it's like... It's being sort of advocated in the church that, you know, it's kind of hip to kind of skirt around the Bible a little bit, have some spiritual experiences. Um, There's nothing wrong with, you know, doing things a little bit differently, and you want to try to, you know, try to reach people where they're at. But, you know, I can just tell you, I was really alternative. I mean, I, I was about as old. I was out in San Francisco. If you really look at the Jesus movement, people were, you know, hippies and all that. There's something being taught now, like you've got to change everything uh, to reach people, the Word of God, you know, when I stood in that fraternity house and, and, and I was convicted by the Holy Spirit, you know, that was beyond anything. That was just the power of God and His truth. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but through me. It's a narrow way. Oneness is a broad way. And this, this voice from, from the enemy that's trying to come into the church and is doing a fairly good job through contemplative prayer is trying to bring in this very simple bottom line teaching that, hey, 
We're all connected. There's that big word, connected. We're all connected. We're all one. We're all God. And if we don't subscribe to this, we could hinder world peace because those that don't subscribe to divinity could be hindering world peace and would have to be dealt with in the future. And I see that being set up right so now. Peace through tyranny under the Antichrist. Is that the eventual goal? Well, of all? you know, Jeremiah, peace, peace, but there is no peace. Peace is a great mm -hmm. code word. Peace, love, and happiness. Peace, love, and happiness. <laughs> you know? But what are the bottom line teachings that come with it? One of the things that, that really disturbs me about this whole uh, uh, impact on the church is that more and more I'm seeing Christian leaders either directly saying or implying there are many different roads to God. Many different roads. There's the Muslim road and the Hindu God. But it's all leading the same God. It's exactly what New Age leader Neil Donald Walsh said. He said that on speaking for his God, he said there are a thousand ways to God and they'll all get you there except for one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the one that denies that there are a thousand ways to God. Well, there seems to be a, a tremendous uh, uh, feeling today in, in many churches that we cannot really preach the gospel because the gospel calls for repentance. It talks about sin. It talks about the blood of Jesus. And those will be offensive. We, we've got to be seeker sensitive. We've got to, to be sure that we don't offend anyone. Well, the gospel is offensive. Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he said, these are hard things, people, but... He said, you follow me, you're going to be persecuted. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. But he didn't leave it at that. You know, we have his Holy Spirit. We are to walk into the world and we are to stand on the truth. We're to contend for the faith. And what's happening today is a lot of pastors are just capitulating. They're trying to fill their churches. They're compromising. And there's a lot of, I mean, one thing I'd really like to say before this show ends is that there's a lot of double speak. Paul warned about those who are double-tongued, James, double-minded. David talked about in Psalm 12 about those with a double heart. What's happening is that some of these pastors will be cornered about what they're saying and that, that, that they lead into like New Age teachings. And they'll say, oh, you've got to watch out for the New Age. And then they'll come back to someone like me and say, hey, he's, he's warning about the New Age. You've got to be really careful. One well-known Christian figure who's going around at the highest levels of church assemblies and denominations said very clearly in one of his books to survive in the postmodern church you need to speak out of both sides of your mouth he actually said that then he he used the two words that he was being cute with imminence and transcendence alice bailey benjamin Krim with maitreya the Aquarian Conspiracy said that God is not only transcendent out there he is imminent inside each and every person. And here you've got this man who's going around to every denomination, leadership level, and he's saying to survive in the postmodern era, you have to learn to speak out of both sides of your mouth. And then he also quotes Tehar de Chardin saying that he sees and these emergent leaders see the faith in a much more magnificent way than their forefathers. This is arrogance, it's pride, you know, it's 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 the the, the crew of the Titanic telling everybody it's okay. Well, our time is just about up, but in the time we have left, I'd like for you to address this question. What can we do to protect ourselves against deception? Because it says in the Bible, the end time is going to be a time of great deception. And there's a lot of people out there viewing and think, well, I could never be deceived. But we all can be deceived. How can we protect ourselves from deception? Just like my Course in Miracles teacher said, put on the full armor of God and stand fast against the wiles of the devil. <laughs> so you want us to read A Course in Miracles? Get no. into the Bible no. and stay yeah. in the Word. Romans 1, she, she pulled that it's... out of her Bible background, <laughs> and she was right. And this, this sad woman you know, had a very difficult demise because she, that was one rare time where she quoted Scripture. But the Bible is true. It, it described everything that we were involved in. I had immense respect for the Bible immediately because it just, it is so completely authoritatively from God. And you need to measure whatever, you know, like the Bereans, you've got to measure whatever you're being told by the Bible. And you've got to remember, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Harry Ironside, the old Moody Bible teacher, he said the most insidious form of deception is error mixed with truth. There. So yes. people yeah. need to be aware. And this is coming in all over the place. Well, Warren, how about telling our viewers how they can get in touch with you and your ministry? Uh, Mountain Stream, right Mount, that, mountainstreampress.org is our website. And uh, my email is on there. I can, you can ask questions. I, I usually respond. 
And there's a, there are a lot of good discernment ministries out there that you can go to. Heroscope is one. Uh, guardinghisflock.org is one. Might be .com. Spiritual Research Network. Lighthouse Trails. Berean Call, of course. Dave Hunt and T.A. Mm-hmm. McMahon have been around for years. Carol Matricianis. And I don't mean to forget anybody, but they're, they're just, there are a lot of good places where you can go to get articles um, and information that will help you in standing fast against this deception. We need to contend for the faith. Not too many pastors are contending for the faith, fighting the good fight. They're kind of compromising. And another way you can uh, uh, find out things is uh, by coming to our website at lamblion.com and asking the most difficult questions you can possibly think of to Nathan. <laughs> I, I just love to see Nathan break out in a cold sweat and wring his hands and spend days doing research to try to answer some of these questions. Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> bring it on. Bring it, bring it on. on. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. You can also uh, find uh, our television programs uh, on that website, and I would urge you to be sure and uh, check out the program last week if you did not see it, where Warren gave his personal testimony, which is summarized in this book, The Light That Was Dark From the New Age to Amazing Grace. Warren, you have been a great blessing to us. Thanks for being on the program. Thanks for having May me. the Lord continue to pour out His Spirit on you. May He continue to bless you in your ministry and magnify your voice. Well, folks, that's our program for this week. Until next week, the Lord willing, this is Dave Reagan. Speaking for myself and Nathan Jones saying, look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Our guest on today's program, Warren Smith, has written a fascinating book entitled, The Light That Was Dark. This book is a sobering warning to the world and to the church that we are being seduced by the same false teachings and the same false Christ that had once driven him into the New Age movement. Warren shares his compelling personal story in which he encountered the spirits of deception and followed their signs and wonders before coming to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This book is available for a gift of $15 or more plus the cost of shipping. To order a copy, call the number you see on the screen Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, or order online at lamblion.com. Make plans now to join us for our 2013 Bible Conference at the beautiful Allen Performing Arts Center in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. The conference is scheduled for the last weekend of June, June 28th and 29th. Our theme this year will be Living on Borrowed Time and will feature an incredible lineup of speakers such as Robert Jeffers, Alan Franklin, Ron Rhodes, Don McGee, Nathan Jones, and David Reagan. Inspired music will be led by Jack Hollingsworth and the Exalt Quartet. The conference is free of charge, but registration is required. You can register at our website at lamblion.com or by calling the number you see on the screen, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus. 